Poštovani gledatelji, dobrodošli još u jednu emisiju Vidljivi tragovi. Danas smo u društvu jednog haičanina. Njegovo je ime Jimmy Belabre i on je najmlađi ravnatelj srednje škole na Haitiju, a s nama je i voditelj volontera Marini Hobroka u Splitu. Njegovo je ime Ivan Poljić. Dobro nam došli. Evo, Ivane. Hvala, dobar dan. Hvala što si pozvao Jimmy-a, odnosno ovo što si ga doveo u naše studio, da malo saznamo više o tome kako Marini obroci djeluju. On je konkretan primjer za to, je li da? Mada da, tako je. Jimmy je odrastao na Marini obrocima. Zahvaljujući Marini obrocima uspio se školovat i danas je najmlađi ravnatelj srednje škole na Haiti. Kako je došlo do toga da ste krenuli sa deset godina u školu? First of all, I have to say that I'm from Sidi Soleil in Haiti. And Sidi Soleil is a place where there's a lot of misery, there's a lot of hunger and people is killing every day with bullets and diseases like cholera, malaria, all these things. And I was born in that place and grew up in that place, you know, as a child of 10 years old in that place, it was so hard for me to um, think about the future or to realize that I'm loved by God or to realize that I'm loved by other people because life was so hard and terrible. And uh, at this moment, I had, uh, I had to make a decision to um, go to a wrong direction or go to um, a good direction, like positive and negative, good and evil. But um, it was easier for me to go to the wrong direction the reason is because um, you know it's a place where every morning you ask and ask one question to yourself: What am I gonna eat today? Why am I so hungry today? Or why am I hungry since yesterday until now? I'm hungry. And why my family is gonna eat? And when you're asking yourself this question, you have just one answer, and the answer is no, um, nothing. Or there's a place where the people go and they take a mod. Uh, from garbage and uh, they mix it with butter and salt and sugar and they make like a pancake and they bake it in the sun for a few days and people is eating like the mud cake and you ask them to yourself am I gonna eat that today and you see in people doing gang activities you know having money and eat whenever they want and wasting money wasting water which is things that is luxury for you and you saying to yourself, hey, I think I can drink this guy and maybe I can live a better life. Even though I'll end up in jail or die, but um, let me try that because I can at least do something to support myself and support my family. But fortunately at this moment of my life, um, um, that, that's why I love women. My mother was able to fight to put me to a school that Meadows Mills provided food. And that school is a free school, and uh, everybody wanted to go to that school. And there was no place for everybody. And my mother, I don't know how she did it, but she helped me to go to that school. And in that school, um, like as a child, you know, my first motivation was not to learn. It was not to meet other people. It was not to change uh, my future. It was just because I need to eat. And I know that in that school, I find a meal every day. And um, I have to tell you that this was like the best day of my life because I have thousands of other best days in my life, but that was like the beginning of my future, the beginning of Jimmy. Because I could go to the school and I could stay in the school, I could focus because I, you know, I, I had an answer for my question, what am I going to eat today? And um, I could make new relationships, I can make new friendship, meeting new people and you know start becoming you know like a positive person till I became the president of that school for that for five years because you know in the school I was so joyful because I was so happy and it makes me want to learn, want me to be there for the people, want me to make people smile, want to make the people laugh and um, I go to that school and graduate there and they ask me if I can come back and spend one year volunteer. And I did it. And after that, I started to work for uh, the organization that I went to the schools. And I work as public, I, I'm in charge of public relationship, 
I'm in charge of student life in eight schools and I'm the high school principal. I think the youngest high school principal in my country. And uh, I'm doing music, I'm doing karate. It's because males means because of that meal gives me so many options that I could choose something to do in my life. I, I had like too many options, too many dreams. And now you know, I almost can do a little bit of everything that I found on my way. So now I'm, you know, I could be uh, one of the terrible gangsters of my place because when I'm doing something, I want it to be perfect. So I would be a perfect gangster and that would be the worst one. But now, you know, I'm a different person. I'm someone that the people is calling every day. Hey, can you come train us? Can you spend time with us? Can you go to election to be the mayor? Can you go to election to be the deputy? And, you know, I'm now working for my population in the school that I went, and I'm feeling so happy that I am trying to help the, the people to receive what me I received when I was 10 years old, because there's thousands of other Jimmy in my community who is waiting for help, waiting for support so that they can sh change their life. So I'm so happy that today Meryl's Mills make of me like a symbol for my community, make of me like a mentor, an example for the young people of my community. And I'm, I feel so happy to be here today and to, to say a little bit about my experience with Meryl's Mills. <laughs> I lost my father when I was 11 months old and my mother when I was eight years old. You don't have someone to comfort you when you're sad. First, my mother used to comfort me when I was sad. I never chatted with my father because he died when I was very young. But my mother, I miss her so much. It was hard. It's a hard life. When you're hungry, you cannot be able to think. I used to go to school without food. Receiving Mary's mail changed my performance in class. After receiving Mary's mail, I was going to class with a full stomach, so I was active and be able to listen to what the teacher say. Ivana, kako je moguće da opće dijelo u Marini obraci u svijetu? Uh, Nipak treba nekakva sredstva za djelovanje, tako? I djeluju u dosta zemalja. Čija to uopće ideja? Kako je došlo do toga? Kako ti gledaš na taj projekt kao neki prst Boži u ovom modernom vremenu? Uh, za Marinu obrotke se kaže da su plod Međugorja. Uh, osnovatelj marinih obroka je Magnus Škot uh, i on je sa svojim bratom za vrijeme rata u Bosni i Hercegovini uh, tražio pomoć u Škotskoj i prikupljao je sredstva koja su potrebna, bila potrebna u Bosni i Hercegovini. Uh, kada su uh, napunili kombi, uh, uputili su se u Bosnu i Hercegovinu, to jest u Međugorje, tako da su uh, dobili eto, tu, tu milost i samo reći na daknuće, da, da pokrenu nešto dobro. Kad se vratili nazad u Škotsku, pomoć je dalje stizala. Magnus, osnivatelj marinih obroka, je tada radio na farmi ribe. Ostavio je posao i krenio je dalje nositi taj, ta sredstva u Bosnu i Hercegovinu. Kako se nastavio dalje baviti humanitarnim radom, obilazio je zemlje u kojima je bila potrebna pomoć, zvali su ga na sve strane i stvarno je e, radio čudesa, što mi se rekli. Baš je opisao svoje djelovanje u knjizi, e, u, u svojoj knjizi Baraka koja je nahranila milijun djece. Danas Marinje obroci hrane e, više od milijuni i 200 tisuća djece. 
jednog dana našao se u Malavi, znači to je zemlja u Africi, u jednoj kolibi. U toj knjizi opisuje kako je stajao u toj kolibi i doslovno svom glavom dirao plafon te kolibe. Ispred njega je ležala majka na podu, na zemljanom podu te kolibe i oko nje su bila njena djeca. Najstariji sin te majke se zvao Edward i Edward je imao tada 14 godina. I Magnus ga je pitao, Edward, koje su tvoje ambicije, koje su tvoje želje u životu? I on mu odgovorio, volio bi jednog dana ići u školu imati dovoljno hrane za jesti. I odtud ideja Marinih obroka. Please join me in honoring CNN hero and I'm proud that he's a fellow Scotsman, Magnus McFarlane Barrett. On behalf of, of the thousands of people all over the world who are working to, to realize this vision that we have, that every child in the world should be able to receive at least one good meal every day in the place of education. Ja znam da su volonteri mnogi. Dakle, za ono što rade, kuhaju, ne traže naknadu. Ali ipak je potreban neki novac za nahraniti djecu. Tako je. Znači, postoje donatori. Uglavnom su to donatori iz cijelog svijeta koji doniraju za marine obroke. I mala sredstva su potrebna da bi jedno djete kroz cijelu godinu dobivalo obrok u školi. To je samo u prosjeku 120 kuna. Znači za 120 kuna je potrebno da bi djete svaki dan u školi kroz cijelu godinu dobivalo obrok. To ovako izgleda možda nemoguće za 120 kuna, ali oni u tim siromašnim zemljama dobivaju za obrok kašu, bilo od kukuruza, od riže, fažola ili sl. Jimmy, zbog čega je toliko siromaštva i nepravde na svijetu, pa evo i u vašoj zemlji? I think in, in my country things are, like there's problems all over the world, but um, it seems like it's worse in my country because the UN, United Nation, in 2004, I remember, they declared that this is the most dangerous place on the planet. So much there's a lot of, you know, bad activities and it's it's hard for the people to live there and they have to because they can't go anywhere else and i think uh the problem that we're facing in the world now and in my community especially is because the people they started to lose themselves so they don't know who they are because uh once you're thinking about yourself only you start to lose yourself because uh we didn't call to live for ourselves so we're living for other people because what we do what i do has an impact to your life and what you do has an impact to my life so it means that we really uh, need to live to work in a situation where what i'm doing is good for you and what you're doing is good for her and um, i think this is how people need to be living on earth because uh, like for an example if i'm rich and i'm taking everything for myself So I start to lose myself because I don't see other people and I'm losing my safety too because I'm like a target for everybody. They think that, oh, he got all the money. So if we want to get a little something, we have to kill him or we have to, I don't know, do something to get the money from him. But if I have and I share with other people and I see other people and it makes it easier for me to have more and to have more people and to have more safety because people is saying that this guy is helping us to be you know at the same level like original so we have to help him we have to take hands with him and do things together we have to protect him and protect your uh, other people means that you protect yourself i think if the world start uh stop believing that they are living for themselves we can have like a better world Creyentes y no creyentes, estamos de acuerdo en que la tierra es una herencia común cuyos frutos deben beneficiar a todos. Sin embargo, ¿qué pasa en el mundo donde vivimos?
La relación entre la pobreza y la fragilidad del planeta requiere otro modo de ejercer la economía y el progreso concibiendo un nuevo estilo de vida. Porque necesitamos una conversión que nos una a todos. Liberarnos de la esclavitud del consumismo. In my country, um, we have some nice beaches too, but we have some dirty beaches too, like much more is, is dirty. But uh, sometimes the garbage that we throw on the beach, they go to the Jamaica uh, beach, like the wave take them to, to Jamaica. So you see there's a relationship between all of us, even though we like so far, like I'm doing it and it affects Jamaica. So everything that I do, it's affect other people. But I think if I uh, keep the ocean, the sea clean in home, Jamaica would not be dirty. So I think it's that relationship that the people needs to really believe that I do things for my people or for the society, but not for myself. I think if we do it like that, we have a better world. And this is kind of like the mission of Meryl's Mills. You know, they don't see themselves. They don't see like Magnus or other people, they don't see themselves. So they see the hunger children all around the world and they're trying to reach them. I think uh, if they didn't help me when I was 10 years old, Magnus goes to Haiti. So maybe one day accidentally, I, I, if I was a gangster, I would kill him. <laughs> and so today, you know, I can sit with him and we can work for the community. And um, I can go to places and talk about Meryl's Mills. It was because, you know, they decided to help people that they don't even know. And now they're building future, not only for me, they're building future for the world, they're building future for the other communities that they don't know. Every woman, every man knows that a child needs food, that food can do nothing. Before Mary's Mills came, we had a lot of problems. They dropped out of the school because they were eating nothing when coming from home. That could have easily been us. And any one of us. One of uh, the easiest way to become a better man is to, a better person, is to believe in yourself and believe that you're loved by God. And if you believe that you're loved by God and you live for God and you'll do what God asks you to do, and what God, God asks you to do is good for the human being. So I think you, can, you need to have like a prayer life too, and you need to believe that you can do things uh, with help of other people and you can do things yourself too for the community is anytime you forget about yourself and think about other people you start becoming a better person and it helps not only you it helps the whole world I think yeah first of all you have to really believe in yourself and believe that you loved by God and if you think that you loved by God you'll do what God asks you to do which is love one another I think što bi kazao nekome ko bi tebi rekao da ti zapravo umišljaš i da Bog ne postoji? Uh, first of all, I would not say anything to the person I'd say something to the God. I'd say to God, please, you did that for me one day. You make me realize that you exist and do the same thing for that person. Because um, it's better if you communicate with God for people who who ignores God then you know saying now oh, you're not good you have to believe that God exists sometimes God use people to make people believe that they exist but by things that is happening in their lives every day and people still can't believe these things they still believe that was an accident oh that uh, that was something else that wasn't God but you know what I believe too like if anybody has the chance to go to Medjugorje you, you can have a better idea of God exists Because once you be there, you see there's thousands of people there come together, different languages, and there's no fight, there's no misunderstanding, there's no people, you know, not smiling. Like everybody, different languages, but they live together. And everybody went there because they believe that Maria can do something, 
can talk to the God for them, can talk to Jesus for them. You see, you know, you see it's like um, they go there for a spiritual reason. And if they can see the miracle happening there, like people is living together, they can start believing that God exists. And uh, God is good too, and God provides. So I think everybody one day in the world will realize that there's a God in heaven, and he's the one who provides the breath for us to, to live, the food for us in the nature, water for us to drink, the sea, and the beautiful people that we're meeting every day, and people who is doing good things all around them, they'll know that God provides all these things. Obično ljudi kažu da je vrlo teško pitanje tko je za tebe Bog. A evo vi, Jimmy, kažete da i nije tako baš teško pitanje. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a hard question. Like when I was 18, this is where I started to read like all kinds of books. I was in school, I was, uh, you know, teachers was teaching us about philosophy and everybody was thinking, oh, maybe there's no God. You know, like when I was 18, I was reading and I was questioning. And I think um, I realized that thinking about the sun, thinking about the sky, thinking about the universe, thinking about people, like a very fragile creator, uh, creature is living every single day. And God is the one who gives us the chance to live another day. God is the one who provides everything that we're having to have a better life. God is the one who provides, uh, you know, sad moment in our life so that we can think about him and pray to change our situation. I believe there is just one God and God is in heaven. And I think it's the God that everybody is supposed to uh, believe in. C'est pas tout bagaille qu'on fait pour nous expliquer. C'est pas tout ça au fait tout qui mérite pour cacher. C'est pas tout ça au temps des yeux créoles ou comprendre. Non histoire pas non pas faire secret moi pour le parler. Pas con comment on fait pour bail ça que non mais on l'en plaisir. S'ils sont garçons même gens avec ni s'ils ils sont filles. Pas non qu'on titre ou mes ygrènes même pour me bail plaisir. Pas de regrets on l'en sait celle j'en préserve pour lui. Pagan pile pour elle, si ce brush seulement devant tout le monde. Bonjour, vous les types, vous êtes pour le bon, vous êtes qui cool. Les maps, vous êtes les mêmes, vous êtes les mêmes, vous êtes les mêmes. Pagan met les mêmes poches, vous êtes les mêmes devant tout le monde. Jimmy, vous avez filmé les deux pièces en Majugorio. Pouvez-vous nous dire ce que vous avez fait dans ces pièces? J'ai enregistré deux songs en Majugorio. I can't believe these unbelievable musicians, like in less than four hours, they didn't know the songs before and they were playing and we recorded two perfect songs. One is called Duet Nadiva Tool, which means uh, it's about my guitar, it's finger in front of the whole of the guitar, I'm trying to describe the guitar when I'm playing it. And the second one is about my death. I was thinking about me dying and what would I like to say to the people to my friends and family. So um, I was describing how the place is and uh, tell them I'm fine where I am, stop crying. And uh, I wrote that song because I went to sing somewhere after the earthquake. Um, and uh, I couldn't go back home because it was far and I was sleeping in a tent. And there was a church, a Protestant church, and there was a, um, a voodoo priest doing something at the same moment. And it was like two forces like fighting against each other. And I was like in the middle. And the tent was lit like fire was all around. And I couldn't breathe, I couldn't talk. I was trying to ask for help and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't move and I thought that I was dying. And the next day when I, I woke up, I walked from that place for like two hours to go to my house and I was recording the words in my mind to make that song and when I got home I put it on paper and I found a melody for it and I wrote that song but not many people want to do that because it's kind of creepy talking about you dying but uh, it's one of my favorite songs.
according to my society, one of the hardest things is to talk about God. It's not because you're not free, just because you're doing it all the time and people still can't believe it. And you have to do it, you have to do it, you have to do it a thousand times and people still can't believe it. And in Haiti too, religion, not so many churches is like good church, especially the Protestant churches. Like a lot of them is not about God really, it's about something else. So it makes you sometimes, you feel like not comfortable to talk about it, <clears throat> but you just realize that I have to, I have to, because it's a mission. I think this is one of the hardest thing. And one of the things is what people expected from you as a Christian. My hair is not supposed to be like that. I'm not supposed to wear jewels. I'm not supposed to, there's a lot of things that society, if you do it, they think that you're not Christian. I'm not supposed to dance. I'm not supposed to listen to other songs uh, that is not uh, like uh, gospel songs. So there's a lot of things that people expect from a Christian and uh, they don't know if God knows that these things we're living, they're around us and we have to connect it with them so that we can connect with other people. And um, this is, it, it makes uh, life of a Christian in my country hard. And I think for the whole world is, you know, making people believe that God exists is something hard to because you know people really believe that in, in money people believe in materials they think that sometimes you even think this is God for them like people spend much more time in their cell phones than praying people spend much more time doing other things than praying so it makes like you disconnected to God from day to day. Plusieurs visas différents, mais yon seul destination. Plusieurs fous différents pour faire route ça n'a pas mettre même quand son. Mais optimiste pas bien péché me coucher dans la boîte là. Plusieurs jours en bataille m'a passé zèle l'aime fin de bataille. Ah, create different kinds of uh, way. I say like simple words and I uh, spend time in silent places and I sing to pray and um, you know thinking about the nature and say thanks God this is all kinds of way me I pray <laughs> Nije bilo prijetnje da postaneš gangster, je li tako? <laughs> da. Je li tebi možda baš ovo sudjelovanje i aktivnost u Marijinim obrcima omogućila da se nekako u sebi više približiš Bogu? E, pa mislim da je. E, evo, može se vidjeti ta Božja ljubav kroz djelovanje Marijinih obroka. E, ljubav to je nešto što ne vidimo, što vjerujemo, što osjećamo. Isto je, to je Bog. Bog je ljubav. Znači njega ne vidimo ali ga osjećamo, vjerujemo i mislim da sva ljubav dolazi od njega. Znači, to je jedno veliko djelovanje marinih obroka je nastalo od Boga, tako da možemo kroz njegovo djelovanje vidjeti djelovanje e, tog jednog globalnog pokreta koji stvarno mijenja svijet. Ti si inače i otac četvero djeca i kako ti to onda sve stigneš? Ovo isto iziskuje dosta vreme. E, da, otac sam četvero djece. Od 11 mjeseci do 7 godina. Da, tako je. Uzbudljivo, da? Pa uzbudljivo je. <laughs> Pogotovo moj supruzi. Ona je 24 sata s njima. Kako stignem? Pa eto, nekako stignem. Bog da snage. Što biste kao otac htjeli da nauče vaša djeca o životu? Što je stvarno bitno? E, mislim da je prvo bitna vjera u životu. E, drugo, da budu solidarni prema drugim ljudima da drugim ljudima pružao ljubav i volio bi da se školuju, da treniraju neke sportove. Da im bude ispunjen život u svakom slučaju. Hvala vam puno na ovom razlogu. Thanks, Jimmy. Hvala Ivan. Evo, želim vam i dalje da nastavite uspješno djelovati i donositi Marine obroke onima kojima je to potrebno. Hvala vam. Poštovani gledatelji ovoj emisija, vidljivi tragovi, ostanite i dalje uz radosno vijest. Do vičenja. Non dimentichiamo mai che il vero potere è il servizio e che anche il Papa, per esercitare il potere, deve entrare sempre più in quel servizio 
que ha el suo vértice luminoso su la croce. Debe guardare al servicio humile, concreto, rico di fede di San Giuseppe e come lui, come lui aprire le braccia per custodire tutto il popolo di Dio e accogliere con affetto e tenerezza la intera umanità, specie i più poveri, i più debili, i più piccoli, quelli che Matteo descrive nel giudizio finale sulla carità, chi ha fame, sete, chi è straniero, nudo, malato, in carcere, solo qui serve con amore, sa custodire.